Just when I thought I'd seen it all in terms of chess openings, tricks, and traps, then lo, <laughs> there comes a brand new opening. At least new to myself. Ladies and gentlemen, chess is very dynamic. And I'm sure by the end of this video, you are going to agree with me that there's a lot more stuff that we need to learn about chess. So the tricks and traps that I'm about to show you today in the two nights defense precisely can be played from beginner level up to grandmaster level whether in bullet, blitz, rapid matches or even classical games. I'm sure you're going to like this video which is why I encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I mean at least if you find this video interesting. So why it begins with pawn to e4. Here goes our first trick then e5 knight f3 attacking our a5 pawn then we go knight c6 and then what plays bishop c4 this is the italian game now right in this position black can either play bishop c5 or knight to f6 in this video we are focusing on knight to f6 we are not going to talk about bishop c5 and this is what i want you guys to be playing knight to f6 this is called the two knights defense this is what i want you guys to be playing from today onwards Oh, this is very solid. You're going to love it. Watch up to the end. So knight to g5, which is the second top played move in the leeches database, is what you're going to see most of your opponents playing, hoping to enter into the lines of the fried liver attack. As you can see, white is just simply attacking our weak f7 pawn with his bishop and the knight. And so here I recommend you go d5. And after they take, well, you don't play any of these highlighted moves. I know in my previous video, on the two knights defense, I recommended the move knight to d4, which is an okay move by the way. So if I do not recommend any of these highlighted moves, knight takes d5, knight d4, or the most popular continuation knight to a5, what do I recommend? Because see that this pawn is attacking your knight on c6, I just recommend that you ignore this threat and play pawn to b5. Wow. This world is nice. You guys, I've been playing chess for nearly 20 years and I can't imagine that I completely gave this opening a blind eye. And just like I mentioned earlier on, this is also playable in classical and the position is almost equal according to Stockfish. From here, we can expect to see Bishop takes b5, which is the top played move, by the way, according to the Leeches database. Bishop f1 is the second most played move. D takes c6, the third played move. Bishop b3 and knight takes f7. This is what we are going to cover in this video. Starting with bishop takes on b5 first. And oh, I should mention that all these highlighted moves in red are blunders, okay? Spoiler alert, the correct move here is bishop f1, which is very weird and very difficult for your opponents to see. Why? Because it looks weird to undevelop your piece. Like, imagine you just developed bishop to c4, again you go back. This is a stockfish move. It's not a human move. So let's start with the mistakes first. Bishop takes b5. After this, I recommend you just play queen takes on d5, attacking the bishop and the pawn on g2. And here you may see white taking on c6, after which you just take the bishop, still attacking the pawn on g2. Black may castle short, and then you play bishop b7, intending to checkmate on g2. And here you will see white stopping this checkmate with pawn to f3. The top played move again, after which I recommend you go pawn to h6 first. I know there's quite a number of moves that you can play bishop c5 check. And here you see that most of the times we also castle long, we don't want to castle short. Anyways, let's continue. After pawn to h6, please note that if the knight goes to e4, will be glad to take it and also take the pawn, the free pawn. So you see white playing knight to h3 and yes, even though you can go bishop c5, which is also an okay move, this is why you can surprise your opponent by start advancing right away on the king's side. This is the beauty of this opening. So knight f2 is what you are going to see most of your opponents playing. You go pawn to g4 anyways. And here is the first trick by the way. If pawn takes pawn, will be glad to checkmate white on g2. That's checkmate. So you won't see white blundering like that, which is why they like playing queen e2 in this position, simply attacking the pawn on e5. Well, here you just continue by castling long. And if they take our pawn with their knight, we take back with our knight, they'll take with their pawn. And again, remember that we are still eyeing the g2 pawn. So white won't have time to recapture our pawn on e5. 
h5 is what i recommend just simply going for a kingside attack we just want to open up the h file for our h rook so black will play something like g5 they don't want to open up this file so bishop c5 check we have plenty of things to do and then we go rook d4 the plans are very simple we just want to play along this diagonal by the way the queen can't still take this pawn here because we have a mate on g2 so they may play something like pawn to h3 just creating a breathing room for the king here you just simply go rook e4 if queen f3 rook f4 queen e2 you simply take on g2 that's check by the way supported by the light squared bishop if queen takes we take the rook on f1 because the queen cannot take our rook the queen is pinned to the king by our bishop so king h2 and then we take the queen we start taking the other pieces so this is one possibility of how the game can go let's look at another possibility another line now you guys see it only takes four to five seconds to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already that's how you encourage me to keep on making more wonderful content and by hitting the like button you are simply saying thank you Casper. please let's grow this community together and continue encouraging one another for more serious content you can simply join membership by visiting my patreon page the link is in the description down below and there you also find the link for my website where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices and i hope that sounds good all right so back to this position we just played queen d5 attacking the g2 pawn and the bishop so white takes on c6 then we take back the bishop still eyeing the weak g2 pawn and then white rushes to castle again what did i say when you see your opponents castling short very early you start thinking of the kingside pawn storm starting with pawn to h6 g5 g4 etc so bishop b7 is what i recommended intending to checkmate on g2 and so we just looked at what happens after pawn to f3 but in this position white can also play knight to f3 simply stopping that checkmate idea and wait a second so don't go pawn to e4 here that's one move to remember just simply castle long to avoid anything okay now white plays pawn to d3 then here there's quite a lot of moves that you can play now pawn to e4 here is even a possibility because your king is safe your king is no longer on the center but here i even like this move pawn to g5 this is one of the key moves in this opening when the dust settles just simply open up the g file for your king's rook okay the plan is very simple we just want to go pawn to g4 by the way this is a poisoned pawn white cannot take this pawn in almost all the variations because of this queen bishop battery that we have along this diagonal we are going to mate white on g2 so white has to be very careful so our plan is simply to go pawn to g4 harassing this white knight eg if white takes with the bishop we simply go rook g1 for example if white plays knight bd2 we just simply take the free bishop it is free because if knight takes on g5 again we simply mate on g2 so this is how tricky this opening is and because of this threat of taking the bishop you won't see white playing knight bd2 they'll play something like bishop takes on f6 which happens to be the top played move and after this you can now simply take the bishop on c6 and still we have a threat by the way of taking on g2 for example knight bd2 then we play bishop b4 going for this knight because what we want to do is taking this knight and after queen takes we take the other knight with our queen so c3 is forced and here we just simply take the pawn on d3 because if c takes b4 we simply take the knight because if knight takes on d2 for example there's a mate in four after rook takes on g2 and let's check if king h1 we go rook g1 double check then king takes g1 is the only move after which we play queen g5 check queen g4 then mate so those are the tactics that are hidden behind this move rook takes on d2 which is why you will see white taking with a queen but still we can recapture with our queen on f3 and now checkmate is unavoidable i mean there's nothing absolutely nothing that white can do to stop the checkmate if pawn to g3 we have the bishop on b7 here we just simply mate on g2 once again so let's look at another possibility here okay back to this position here we are still looking at the bishop takes on c6 line and after we recapture 
still eyeing the weak g2 pawn white castles short and this is why i said play bishop b7 intending to checkmate on g2 once again so we just looked at what happens after pawn to f3 or if white plays knight to f3 but what if they play the most played move according to the masters database queen to f3 you can now safely play pawn to e4 why because you are putting a direct threat on the enemy's queen and if they play rook e1 now wait a second castling long is the top played move according to the leeches database and actually it is a very terrible blunder at the same time i mean you can even see for yourself here if you castle long this pawn on f7 is left alone so that's why i said just because you are playing an aggressive opening or an aggressive defense it doesn't mean you need to stop thinking anyways you don't have to castle long here just simply go bishop e7 because you are still holding on to your f7 pawn so now white plays something like queen c6 hoping for a queen exchange well here i suggest that you do nothing about this and instead just try to get rid of your enemy's piece from your territory which is the knight just simply go pawn to h6 asking white where he will take his knight if they take your queen on c6 take back with your bishop and please note that the knight cannot take the pawn on e4 because we have two attackers knight back to f3 is also not a move so you will see them playing knight h3 after which you simply castle along knight c3 is played then you go rook h e8 just playing normal chess here and assuring that you still have an advantage knight f4 bishop c5 i mean you need to play in a way of putting your pieces on active squares this is a typical idea in the two knights defense we usually accept to be down a pawn for an active play all right so this was just about everything to do with bishop takes on b5 now instead of bishop takes b5 you may see white taking on c6 with his d pawn what do you do about this move well let's see so after d takes c6 what i recommend is just simply taking back on c4 and after queen e2 by white by the way this is the top played move white is simply attacking two of our undefended pawns so you go queen d5 defending everything and also posing a threat of capturing on g2 and on c6 so white will be forced to play eg knight c3 attacking your queen and also renewing the possibility of capturing on e5 once your queen goes away so here you just simply take on g2 because now you are also attacking the rook on h1 queen takes e5 check you go bishop e7 there's nothing that white can do you're still attacking the rook on h1 they'll play rook f1 and here you can now safely castle short please note that if queen takes on e7 you have this pin right here because your knight is defending your rook and so white's queen is pinned to the king you should be able to win this game from here anyways so you won't see white taking on e7 they play something like queen g3 going for a queen exchange nap you just take the pawn on c6 if they play d3 take the pawn and after pawn takes you go rook e8 planning to do a simple discovery if bishop e3 blocking the upcoming check they want to castle long in order to put their king to safety but hey we have this sneaky move which most of your opponents will not see bishop a3 the idea is that if b takes on a3 we can simply take the knight on c3 and so you are still going to see most of your amateur opponents castling long because now they think they are attacking your bishop on a3 but you have this move queen takes on c3 and does check this pawn cannot take your queen because it is pinned to the king okay so it cannot take your queen they will go king b1 the only move after which you met on b2 that's how fast the game can end anyways let's go back and see other lines now having gone through all the bad moves what is white's correct response after pawn to b5 on move number five well in all honesty the best white can do is to go back to f1 just like i mentioned in the introduction of this video just simply go knight d4 well at least knight d4 temporarily holds on to the b5 pawn and here the top played move by far is pawn to c3 after which i recommend you go knight takes on d5 and if they play c takes d4 you take the other knight which is on g5 and trust me with this line 
you have to accept losing your castling rights, but it's still okay. And I like this line out of all the lines that I've showed you so far. They'll take on b5 with check. You simply play king d8. Your king is absolutely safe on this square. Because remember, in the two knights defense, it's all about peace activity, okay? It's all about peace activity. It's nothing to do with material. Again, we are targeting the g2 pawn here. So why to castle short and then you play bishop b7. Look, your bishop is indirectly eyeing the g2 pawn together with your queen. And so there are some mating ideas on g2 here if white is not careful. For example, if they play pawn to d3, this is a terrible blunder because it leads to checkmate in 4. Watch. Here you simply play knight to f4 and there is absolutely nothing that white can do about this. They can't stop us from taking on g2 with our queen. Or maybe they can play pawn to g3. Yep, but there is knight h3 which is checkmate. The king can't go to h1 or g2 because of this light squared bishop which is covering all this diagonal. So going back and here the move that you are going to see by white is queen f3 which is a correct move by the way after this move well i just recommend that you defend your bishop on b7 with your rook because the idea is to go knight a4 once again if they play pawn to d3 wait a second knight to a4 in this position does not work because if you play knight to a4 white can now play bishop c6 and there is no checkmate coming you are going to have a worse position this knight is going to be pinned by the bishop to your queen and so here you just simply play queen g6 and now as you can see by the arrows bishop c6 is no longer an option for white you may see white playing the immediate queen g3 what should you do in this position well here you just humble yourself take the pawn on d4 and now we have equal number of pawns if you count properly with a promising position it doesn't matter if white takes your queen i mean this will just help us open the edge file for our king's rook and here stockfish is favoring black in this position now you guys see it only takes four to five seconds to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already that's how you encourage me to keep on making more wonderful content and by hitting the like button you are simply saying thank you Casper. please let's grow this community together and continue encouraging one another for more serious content you can simply join membership by visiting my patreon page the link is in the description down below and there you also find the link for my website where you can purchase all my courses at very affordable prices and i hope that sounds good all right thank you for watching this video guys until next time Bye-bye.